I began assembly of my board yesterday using R's procedure and worked through the audio amplifier section and then quit for the day. There's been a new procedure come out that's in more detail and I think I'll try to pick up using Dan's new assembly procedure. It's a 26 page document. His process is different than the way I was proceeding before and I'm not sure that uh, some of the, his tests on current will work because I have components assembled already that uh, he doesn't do at the first part. So we're going to pick it up and we'll test it and we'll, uh, we'll just proceed ahead like we know what we're doing and hopefully everything will work out fine. The first thing he does is install a bunch of miscellaneous parts on the board. So I will go ahead and pick up his figure 2 in his diagram and we will assemble all those parts using his step procedure starting at page 6. If you have trouble reading these little diodes, join the crowd. I happen to have a little bit of equipment that's kind of nice to do that with. Uh, I have a microscope here that's zoom 8 to 80 power and with that I can kind of make the the readings out but it's even tough there so all I can say is get a magnifying glass and just do the best you can. Here's my setup for reading the markings on those little tiny diodes. Ignore the dirty bench. I just only have so much bench space and I'm using a good clean one to build the board. I have all the diodes installed. Probably the hardest part about this was just the identification then finding them on the schematic. See we have one here of D1. We have one over here. We have one down here. And the other one's lost on there somewhere. So anyway they're all there and we'll move on to doing the electrolytic capacitors next. Okay, I'm down to the miscellaneous section test on page 7. I've made a couple minor changes here. Instead of soldering the crystals in at this time, I've put sockets in there because I want to be able to do some sweet frequency testing on the filter later on. I'll be adding sockets in various sections of the board, mainly for feed through capacitors so I can isolate one section from the other. That's the advantage of building it with ours procedure is you build one section at a time and you can test one section at a time. Doing it this way you end up with a lot of components on the board in various sections so it's a little harder to isolate the sections but I'll do that with sockets so I can plug components in. I have everything all in place now to do the power on test. I have my milliamp meter here. I've got my push to talk switch up here and I have the board and I have it hooked to the power supply. So we're going to power it up. I'm reading 2.8 milliamps here because I have two transistors and their bias network are already installed from when I did the audio amplifier sections. So what we need to do is just take 2.8 milliamps away from any readings we get until we get to the place where he has that in section installed also. The step says that we should have zero milliamps because there's nothing at this point that draws current. Well, like I said, the bias network on the two transistors down here are pulling current and the transistors are biased so they're pulling current also in the audio output section it would be higher if I'd plugged the IC in but I don't have it plugged in yet. So when we turn to go to transmit he calls for a reading of 33 milliamps and what we're going to need to do is subtract 2.8 from it. So we'll flip the switch and hopefully no smoke is going to result. So I'm drawing 36 milliamps so that's about the three more from the 2.8 that we were drawing so our relay is drawing current and if we put our finger on it we ought to feel it switch. Well, I don't 
yeah I can feel it just a little bit but I can also hear it so we know the relay is switching in and out so that was a successful test now we're ready to start on page 8 first thing it says is install the IC that's going to be easy because we have the socket in place and we have a lot of this work done already so I'll shut off here and I'll plug in and do the assembly and then we'll be ready to do the audio amplifier power test test the audio amplifier I tried the test of touching the volume control pot with my finger and I guess I'm just not a very good signal injector because I couldn't get anything to uh, work that way so what I've got hooked up is I'm hooked up with a signal generator putting out a kilohertz at, as you can see up in the left hand screen we've got about one millivolt peak to peak amplitude and it's at one kilohertz and you can hear it in the background so what we're going to do now is we'll switch over to the speaker lead and measure the output so then once I know the input and I know the output I can calculate the dB gain the schematic says we should have about 36 dB of gain so I'm going to go ahead and change this setting here on the vertical deflection and then I'll hook up to the speaker lead. Okay, we'll set it to where we can measure it. It looks like about 180, 180 millivolts. We have 50 millivolts per division. We have 3 plus a little. So if we calculate that, we have 180 divided by 1 and we'll take the log of that. So 180 divided by 1 is 180 so I'm going to just take the log of 180 and that's about 2.255 I'm going to multiply it times 20 20 times the log of E1 over E2 will give me dB that gives me a gain of about 45 dB now the schematic said we wanted 36 dB so we got just a little bit more so that's fine So least that way I was able to tell that the amplifier was working properly even though I couldn't make it static for some reason. I've completed the receiver audio preamplifier installation actually I had all that completed from when I was working on ARVS procedure so now we're back into the procedure so that uh, we can actually get the right current readings and on page 10 now the audio preamplifier test says connect 12 volts measure the current drain with a push to talk switch open should be 8 milliamps and we show 8.2 milliamps I'm going to skip this step about measuring R88 right now because I have to tear the circuit down in order to get my meter back in the voltage mode I'm going to go ahead and close the push to talk switch here and we show 34.7 milliamps and the procedure calls for 33 milliamps so we're right on target with that procedure calls to touch the leftmost pad of C47 with a piece of wire C47 is down here it hadn't been installed yet so that makes it easy and I have a loud hum so that sounds like that piece on it that sounds like that piece is working properly okay I'm reconfiguring out so I can measure voltage and I want to measure the voltage across R88 so I just need to find R88 down there on the board and touch its lead top lead with the voltmeter and I have 5.3 volts I should have approximately 5 volts so we've passed that step. To test the audio preamplifier section I'm going to inject in a signal right in here which is the input to it and I will test the output of the preamplifier on the hot lead of the volume control pot. So 
we'll check that. It says the gauge on that stage should also be about 36 dB, so we'll take a look. Scope trace is a little bit fuzzy because we're operating at 500 microvolts per division right there, and we have about 500 microvolts going in. So that's the input to the preamplifier, so let's take a look at the output. I'm going to change the division so I don't overdrive the scope screen. And we'll hook on to the hot lead of the volume control pot. We'll adjust the vertical to where we can make a measurement. One, two, three, four, four point two divisions times twenty millivolts per division. So that would be 88 millivolts. We have 88 millivolts divided by a half a millivolt. That's 176. So we want to take the log of 176, multiply that times 20, and we have 44.9 dB of gain out of that stage. So we can pronounce that working properly too. You can see the difference in the display once I get out of the mud of uh, 500 microvolt signal level. The trace looks pretty good. Okay, we have the transmit microphone preamp all ready to go. I'm going to change the sequence of the test here, but first there's a little warning. It asks you to install a 4.7K R. 92, you would only install that if you're going to use an Electret mic. If you're going to use a dynamic mic, you'd want to leave that out because otherwise it would put voltage up on your microphone and you don't want that with a dynamic. So I'm going to change the sequence a little bit here because I'm going to measure my voltage across the top of R74 first. We're in transmit and what we want is about 1.7 volts or so. And here's R74. I have 1.86, so that's within limit, so we're fine there. So we'll set up and we'll measure the current now. Okay, we're in receive and we're measured about 8.2 milliamps. We should measure somewhere around 8, it says in the procedure. We'll switch it to transmit. and I'm reading 40 milliamps. Procedure says 39 milliamps, so 40 should be fine too, so we're okay current-wise. 